Uh, I was almost killed the other day, like uh, not the other day, but the uh, the other time in East by a guided missile, you know, which is guided, you know, and we were pretty sure it is a, a, a cornet. It's called a cornet. The, uh, it's called an ATGM, anti-tank guided missile, but it can be used against infantry. And this weapon is so precise, you know, it's uh, like guided missile. So it, it killed two guys beside me, okay? Uh, right there, you know, and it, it's so powerful and precise and dangerous. And it makes sense because the country is more modern than Afghanistan and Kurdistan. So it makes sense that we have such advanced weaponry on both sides. So at the same time, it's terrible. You know, it's terrible. You can be, you should see the the, the wounds, you know, of the soldiers. It's, uh, you know, yeah. They, the other day, there was this uh, medics giving us, you know, latest feedbacks about the, the front lines, you know, uh, on some places. And one of the pictures, and I've seen that kind of scenes before, um, he, he, the, the guy didn't have any like mouth left. You know, this this part, the jaw was like not there anymore. It was all bleeding and like uh, pretty much half of the the face was not there anymore. All bleed, uh, all blood. And I was asked, and I asked, is this guy still alive? He said yes, he's still alive. And but he's gonna have no jaw. That guy, he's gonna be yeah. like just half of the face, you know, because of all this explosion yeah, that he suffered. And yesterday I talked to an American who was giving us supplies for the front line coming. And that guy uh, has concussion, concussion, you know, he's like, he cannot hear from one side yeah. because of this massive bombs that were, that landed, you know, beside his, his places in the Zaporozhye in the south uh, of Ukraine. Yeah. So... And, and and Wally, these two guys that that died um, in front of you the the the, the other day, they they uh, one uh, um they they they're friends of yours. Uh, not friends, I would say, but uh, brothers in, in arms. You know, people I knew briefly, and I remember uh, one of them was speaking French like I do, and uh, verse like like just basic French, but he was, he was Ukrainian. I remember he's, he's, huh. He was Ukrainian. Yeah, he was Ukrainian. He was not an experienced soldier, and but he he had a good attitude. That's typical from the Ukrainians, you know. They're they're very courageous, you know. Many of them they don't have the experience as soldiers because it's it's conscription, you know. So they're sent to the front with minimal training because that's the situation. So he went there into the trench, and he was smiling and being a nice guy, you know. And but he's not experienced, so that's what happened. In, in warfare it's very like war is i would say you know typically in war people either underestimate the, the danger or overestimate the danger so you oh. see a lot of people panicking or being careless in war you see you see being professional usually is be, it's being in the middle you know be professional soldiers usually with experience going to be i would say not careless but not panicking at everything so they're going to be like in the middle but you see a lot of inexperienced soldier when nothing happens let's say nothing happens for three days or a week or two weeks and you're not experienced you might think oh nothing happens it's easy okay. yeah. and then out of nowhere you're going to be killed by advanced weapon you know sometimes and these weapons are so advanced something what what was going on with these guys i mean because in, in a moment there can you just walk me through that 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 what, what happened yeah uh, in, in, in that instance, the, these guys were TD, uh, we call TD territorial defense. So that means basically militias, you know, uh, with minimal training, but very courageous again, very courageous, but no experience. So in that particular situation, uh, we went to, uh, I, I was doing snipers mission, you know, and I, I was telling the Ukrainians commander that this position, this trench in, in the forest was a bad position because it was too obvious, you know? It's, it's you know, you don't put a sniper on, on top of, let's say a church, you know, and, uh, because it's obvious, you know? So it's a target for, for everybody. So they were putting such a trench position in, in, in an obvious uh, place, you know? So I told them it's a very bad idea to, to move this position. So first mistake, the position was obvious. So I went there and there was this, um, this uh, trench, you know, the size pretty much I would say of a bed. You know? So it's pretty small trench you know, with the protection, overhead protection, we call this, with a roof basically. And and I went there uh, with my sniper rifle 
And my intent was to grab information about the latest, what they saw, you know, these two guys, you know, these two in the trench and uh, in the surrounding. Where are the tanks? Where are the, did you see infantry approaching that way? Blah, 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 you know, to, to get some information, you know, because there's nothing like having information from the people at the front, you know, latest information. So I went there and uh, I was protecting myself behind, you know, the, the mounds of, of dirt, you know, because of the trends, they, they have this, this amount of dirt. I was protecting myself with my sniper rifle, being very very careful because I knew that there were enemies in some direction, you know. And so I was protecting myself, putting cam sticks and being very, you know, careful. And these two guys, maybe they were bored in their trench. They went out of the trench, you know? <laughs> and they were like, no, there, there was no war, you know. So we were in the woods, some some kind of cover, which was okay, you know, a bit hidden from the enemy, but not ideal, you know? So I told them, go back into the trench. Did you know how close the Russians were at this point? Yeah, they were uh, pretty much the closest one were, were maybe still far, you know, they, they, they were tanks, lots of, lots of tanks in that position. Maybe 1.5 the closest and the first three, but dozens of tanks, they were everywhere. You can see them like you just, <laughs> you just poke your heads out of the trench and then you can, okay, wow. tank, 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 tank. And these two guys, uh, at that point, I was in the forest, you know, and I, I knew there were tanks in that direction, but I didn't know where exactly, you know. And my intent was to to kill them with anti-tank weapon, the javelin, you no, know? I had the javelin. I had to learn on YouTube, by the way, how to use that that system, but that's- yeah, I heard story. that, man. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so the guy went out of the trench, start smoking, and it, it was in the morning. So you have to, to understand that thermal vision, thermal, th thermal equipment, Know, from the Russian side or any side, especially on the morning, on cold, let's say uh, when it's a bit cold, you know, when it's fresh in the morning, they see more clearly, you know, the bodies and the, the heat spot moving around, you know, so it's very dangerous in the morning, especially when there's no wind, when it, there's, uh, you know, when it's, you know, quiet, you know, in the morning. So it was in the morning, they went out of the trench, I told them, go back into the trench, you know, that's very dangerous what you're doing. So it is the perfect way to get killed, you know. And my teammate, uh, which is um, which is uh, a Canadian, uh, he, he stayed into the trench, you know, I will remember that. <laughs> he, he's like, okay, I have no experience. That was his way of saying it. So I'm going to listen to you, Wally, you know. So I told him, I know war is boring because that's war, you know, you have to stay, you have to do, sometimes your, your job is to do boring stuff. And now your job is to stay in the trench and be ready in case infantry enemy is approaching and we have to shoot them, basically. So you hide and you do nothing else. That's boring, I know, but that's how war is, you know? So we stay there, like bored and in the mud, you know, with his rifle. And I, I, I told him, that's very good. But then the other two guys were like going <laughs> out of the trench, smoking, being like a bit cold, you know? I told him, go back, go back, go back. And they would not listen. Mm. But I was like, the tanks are right there. You know, where are they? And they were, while I was asking this, this, this question, and they moved by the edge of the forest, maybe 10 meters away, you know? And for me, it was enough. And I was like, okay, come back, man. That's never do that. I was like, almost like screaming, you know? Come back, come back, you know? And then they were like, okay, okay, let's come back, blah, blah, blah. And then they came back. And they stayed maybe two, three seconds at the other, the outer where they, they, there was no branches almost. So standing, they went back and I was thinking that's very bad. You know, that's very dangerous what they're doing. So just in case <laughs> some enemy spotted us, you know, I'm going to move away 15 meters just as, you know, precautions, you know, in case, you know, and I always camouflage with my netting and everything like, like a sniper, you know? So I move around in some other direction, 15 meters away, I would say, about. And I was with my binos, all with my nets, and I, I was looking for the tanks. I knew that there were some tanks in that place, and I, I was looking for tanks. And then it took maybe 10 seconds, huge explosion, you know, very powerful, you know? Uh, you, you, I remember exactly how it looked like. I saw the shrapnels, like, you know, like lasers, you know, in front of me, in the smokes, and, and the smoke, you, it, it's hard to explain, but it's, it, it, it was like the smoke of death, you know, you feel death coming, taking people, you know, it's kind of, it's very like, I would say, 
it's hard to explain what you feel death is is there you no know, taking souls you no know, basically and, and i was so shocked i couldn't like half of my head was con you know in concussion you know so and i knew right away that was very bad you know so i, I crawled back to the trench i was so shaking because on one side i could not hear anything more you know and i went under protection beside the trench my colleague you know uh, the canadian was still in the trench shaking as hell you know but nothing he had nothing you know not a single scratch or nothing just shaked you know and i look left and maybe i would say six meters away six seven meters away there were smokes in the air and debris and piece of woods you know and i would say seven meters away there was this guy ukrainian the one who was speaking french a bit very nice guy very very nice guy young one maybe 25 years old i would say and he, he I, both of his legs were gone uh one leg i i think was all messed up you know my memory is not like perfect i think at least the two legs were missing and i think one of this arm was missing but all this uniform was twisted and bloody and he was not moving anymore he was on his back not moving was dead obviously and then the other one the other soldier was maybe two or three meters away from me you know right there right beside me and and it looked like so much like a war war movie it was like perfectly staged move, movie scene you know mm -hmm. the, the guy there laying on his back dead the smokes the the woods laying on the on the you know uh, on the soil on the ground and then this guy was still alive the older one and he was on his side one of his leg was cut you no know, bleeding uh one of his arm was uh, either cut i don't remember exactly but he was in a bad shape as maybe f you no know, maybe i don't remember exactly but i think it was one arm not there and he was full of blood and in a very bad state and he was still bleeding he was on my, looking towards me, but he wasn't towards me. But he was towards me, not looking at me. He was his eyes were closed. And he was deep, deeply like breathing, like, <gasps> and it was like he was telling himself, "What the hell happened?" You know, it was like so shocked. Yeah. And then maybe five, ten seconds after that, he stopped breathing, like like a balloon, like deflating, and he died that way, like two, three meters away from me. And and then it was I think it, I think it was a guidance missile because it was so precise. You no, know? it went right beside the two guys, and I had nothing except this damage to the ear. And 24 hours after that, I was good. I was good to go. Surprisingly, I don't understand how. <laughs> but 24 hours after that, I, I recovered from this. You no, know? but the same day I could not hear from one side.